Hey folks, this is Billy from Permapastures Farm, and this is a bushel of apples. Now, the cool thing about this is that apples, this time of season when it's nearing the end, which by the end of this month will be in North Carolina, you can get a whole bushel of like what they call cull apples, C-U-L-L, -L, for 10 bucks. And folks, I'm here to tell you, like this Evercrisp and all the others in here, I tried to get as many Evercrisps as I could because you can actually get down in the bin and fill it up. Cool thing about this is I am going to do some awesome stuff with this, and it's in full keeping with how a permaculture designer would do it. So the main goal of this is making cider. And I'm going to show you all the things I do with what, what some would call the byproducts of this. Some of it you've seen us do it before and some not so much. So stay tuned, check it out. So here we got all, we got the whole thing set up here in the drying rack over there. I got some of the apples that came from that big bushel box over there, you know, drying and everything else. I basically washed them off pretty good. So 10 bucks worth of apples over there drying. So I'm going to show you, we're going to do this five different ways, but it all really revolves around, or it really makes things a whole lot simpler with this. I don't even know what you call this thing, an apple turner, skinner, peeler type thing. But I, in my view, it's the best thing ever created. So we're going to start with that, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do with all these components. It's not necessarily all that critical that you get all the skin off of it, because you're, you're going to do other things with it, and we'll show you what we're going to do with that. So here we are. It's basically like a little accordion. So what you want to do, we're going to take this, we're going to take this core, we're going to make apple cider vinegar, which we've shown you how to do before. All of the skins you could put in there too, but no, I got omnivores out here that love this stuff. So I'm going to collect it over here. It's going to go to the chickens and the pigs. And this is kind of, if you want to make this stuff sugar free, I'm going to show you how to do that, at least the way I do it, where you can get all the apple flavor without adding any additional sugar or anything like it. So all you're going to do, it's already, you know, they spin them out like that. I'm just going to kind of rough chop them a couple of times and I'm going to throw them in a crock pot. Now, I won't go through the whole thing right here, but basically it takes me to get to the top of this roughly 35 apples. Man, I mean, you, I guess you got to love apples to, to know exactly how many that takes. But here's the key. I'm going to put all the apples in there. I'm going to put in, I don't know, maybe six cinnamon sticks, a little bit of allspice, um, some nutmeg. You can put in there whatever you want. There's a lot of people that like to put citrus in there but I'm gonna use ginger. Um, I still get that bite that ginger provides without necessarily the citrusy thing, which I'm not real crazy about. But the apple flavor is going to be absolutely fascinating. So here it is, like I said, we're gonna take these guys, we're gonna put them in here, cut them up, hit them with a rough chop, put them in the crock pot, core's going here, skin's going here, and then I'm gonna show you what happens after all that's done. So um, right in this pot, we got the equivalent of about 35 apples, and I'm going to show you a couple of tricks how I go about doing this to where we need no sugar at all. Now, in most recipes, you're going to find out that they tell you to fill the thing to the brim with water, then you do your apples that way. If you do it in this slow cooker like this, and the way I'm going to show you, I don't think it's necessary. In fact, I'm going to prove it to you. So instead of doing that, um, I'm only going to add a cup of water. It's kind of like when you do a roast. And they, you know, you put almost like three quarters of a cup of water in there and you're like, man, I don't know if this is going to work out. Like the first time you do it, same kind of thing is going to happen here. But let me tell you what we got. Got some cinnamon sticks. Uh-oh, had a cinnamon stick. You can kind of situate them down in there. They're going to work their way down in there. I'm not worried about getting everything on top right now. So we got a little bit of nutmeg. I'm going to do, I'm going to adjust all the flavors later. So I'm not too concerned about, I'm just kind of giving it a, a little bit of a base. In fact, we can put all that in there. It's almost out anyway. This is ginger. I'm going to leave it rough like this and I want it this way because I want to be able to fish it out easily when I get it when it's all said and done. So that goes in there. And then I got some allspice that I just worked over in this mortar and pestle. So I'm going to dump that in there too. And then of course we just go with our water on top. Now here's the trick. 
here's how I'm going to sweeten this thing without actually adding any sugar to it. And it's going to be plenty sweet. I'm going to put this thing on high, at least just enough to get it going. Then I'm going to let it work itself down. Now it's up to the very brim. When I put the top on here, these cinnamon sticks are, and the ginger will practically be touching. So what's going to happen? I put the top on, I'm going to let it cook down. If I were to leave this alone, it'll cook down to almost, it'll lose a third of what's in here. So it's going to allow me to put another 10 apples in here. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to get this going, let it cook, add another 10 apples that I've cored and everything else. So the pigs and chickens are going to be happy with this. We're going to be happy with the vinegar we're making. And then with all the other stuff, I'm going to show you what we do with that. It's going to be pretty cool. All right. So this stuff has gotten nice and mushy. In fact, you can kind of see it like that. It doesn't look most appealing right now, but it's going to be, and it's going to taste fantastic because I've tweaked this thing and I finally got a recipe I really dig and it doesn't have any sugar in it. So at this point you can go ahead. I pulled out all the uh, cinnamon sticks and the, um, and the uh, ginger got it out of the pot. And uh, now we're to the point where we're left with this magic right here. And it's this simple. Just go ahead and hit it. If you feel like you need to with a potato masher, but dig this. I'm going to show you how cool this is. Get yourself a strainer. You got your pot. You know the whole nine yards. Fill it up. And then all you're going to do is just run your ladle. Just keep working it from the out, outside in from top to bottom. And I'm going to show you a neat little trick. As I'm doing this, it's obviously going through the strainer. That's going to be my cider. And check out what you're going to have. You can do this as long or as little as you like. Now, a lot of people use cheesecloth and stuff like that. I don't feel it's necessary. In fact, I mean, it's more messy to sit there and have to deal with the cheesecloth. But I can sit here and do this. And then I finally get to the point where this stuff, I can roll it around like this and it feels like fruit leather. So what's in that pot is going to be my cider. And what's in here, look at that. It's not even sticking. Bam. That's going to be applesauce. So I'm going to finish doing this pot. And like I said, I'll just keep doing this all the way through. And for me, this is plenty sweet enough. These are apples. Typically, these are apples that they couldn't sell because they had blemishes on them. Maybe they were the wrong size. They weren't big enough. There's a whole host of reasons as to why they would not put these. There's a reason why you can get a whole bushel of apples for about a for about 10 bucks, which is insane cheap when a typical bushel right now is going for somewhere around 40 i think 40 bucks so if you can catch them at the end of the season like this you know you're going to make out like a bandit but see check this out these um doing it in the crock pot like this these apples are so they're so easy to work with right now that i'm making applesauce literally just by taking the back of my ladle and doing one of these numbers you know, some falls down in there. Don't worry about it. And then the cool thing is it doesn't even, as you get to the bottom of it, do one of these numbers, you get all the moisture out of it. And then bam, right there into the applesauce container. Everything that came out of your strainer on the top side is essentially applesauce. There's really, when you're done using that, um, that, uh, ladle, pushing it around in there, it extracts a whole, all, mostly all of the moisture. And what you're left with is essentially applesauce. You could add some sugar to it if that's what you want to do. But this is a lot of applesauce. And I don't think we go through really that much applesauce. So I'm going to take some wax paper. And I'm going to do something cool. We're going to slap this on here and make fruit leather. So it's really this simple. Just, you know, it's, well, try to keep it together. I'm just going to put it out like so and it's probably when it's all said and done it's probably going to be the, maybe a quarter inch thick and i got about 10 trays for this dehydrator so i'm going to go ahead and do about 10 of these i don't know maybe less we'll leave some applesauce behind so yet this is yet another thing you can be doing with all the extra stuff so you talk about squeezing an apple this is how we do it so i'll get this one done I'll do the rest of them and we'll see what they look like here in a little while. Ten dollars for a bushel of apples. Was it worth it? You judge. Okay, so what did we get out of it? We took the cores and everything and we made the apple cider vinegar, which we've showed you how to do in the past. 
So we got two gallons of that. Already paid for itself, right? Now we got a bunch of applesauce, which was the byproduct, obviously, of making uh, two gallons of some bomb, no sugar added, apple cider. That is absolutely fantastic, if I do say so myself. Now there was, there would be considerably more of these. Now these are the fruit roll-ups or the fruit leather, whatever you want to call them. There would be, oh, I got three of them here, and there would be about 12 of them had I not put it on high and went to sleep. So they were kind of stuck to the paper and all. And, and then also be sure, folks, if you do this, try to use the, um, you can use parchment paper, but don't let it go too long or it will be stuck to the parchment paper. But on this one, it's just simply roll it up like that, put it in a couple of bags, and then, you know, you're off to the races. And considering the fact that, you know, for um, Thanksgiving, we're going to have uh, some family down here, uh, nieces and nephews and stuff like that. And what kid doesn't like eating fruit leather, especially stuff that tastes light years better than anything you can buy? So there we have it. 10 bucks for a bushel of apples and i even screwed some of it up i mean so like i said we got the fruit leather applesauce apple cider vinegar and two gallons there would be a whole two gallons here if i didn't drink a whole quart of it but all of that for 10 bucks and for something you could do at home that tastes better than anything you can buy so the moral to the story is i'm probably going to go back before all the orchards shut down for the year and i'm probably going to get at least another couple of bushels because Honestly, for 10 bucks, I mean, I'm, I got two of them actually the last time. I'm actually giving it to the pigs and stuff just, you know, as a little treat or whatever. Even giving some to the chickens. So you got that option as well. And in fact, I'm even thinking about when I go back, I saw so many apples on the ground that they can't use for anything. I'm going to see if I can't avail myself to go out there and pick them up. Probably for free. So I'll let you know how that pans out. But if nothing else, I'm going to get more apples. And I know you're thinking, man, this guy's a total apple crackhead. And uh, to that, the only thing I could possibly say is you're correct. Because I love apples. Everything about apples. We've done it and we've done so many apple recipes in this channel. It'll make your head spin. So there you go. This is what you get for a $10 bushel of ap apples that they're wanting to throw away. So I hope this stuff was helpful. Until next time, this is Billy, the Permaculture Pimp Daddy, where pimp stands for permaculture is my passion. Because it really is. We'll see you next time.